as you come down to the end of the peninsula, whether you're on the ridge or from lower down on the road, you get in view of the full bulk of the reservoir, the widest parts of it, filling the Kellogg Creek watershed drainage. And I'm one of the people who remembers what it looked like before the reservoir. And it was a big flat valley with Vasco Road on the east side of Kellogg Creek. And Kellogg Creek was hugely sinuous through a flat landscape and lined with huge valley oaks and other trees. You'd walk down the valley and the valley would be scorching sometimes and you'd get down into Kellogg Creek and it would be shady and cool and it was beautiful. When I told Adrian Pretzelis we were walking out to the end of this peninsula, his thoughts turned to two archeological discoveries. Both are nearby, but you'll have to take your imagination out into the reservoir beside what used to be Kellogg Creek. There was a really cool site right down by the side of the creek. Traditionally, it was known as the Vasco Adobe. Well, the whole area is known as the Vasco. And that term comes from the involvement of Basques. That is, people from the Basque ethnic group from northern Spain. So the Vasco Adobe was built by a group of Basque settlers led by Bernardo Altuve, who's known as the father of the Basques of North America. He and his brother Pedro and some other young guys, we're talking young guys in their early mid 20s, I think the oldest might have been 24, emigrate from northern Spain to Argentina. They hear about opportunities in California. They ship up the coast, land in San Francisco, and come out to this isolated location. And what do they do? They start doing range cattle and range sheep because that's what they knew how to do. They'd come to California by about 1850. By the early 50s, they had constructed an adobe building with a really cool bread oven attached to it. And that's typical of Basque and indeed Northern Spanish architecture. As far as I'm aware, archeologically, we haven't found any others in California. So it's just interesting that one of the first things that they would do would be construct a bread oven. So essentially the notion is you do a whole bunch of baking, you create a whole bunch of bread, and when your vaqueros are going out onto the range, you send them out there with a couple of loaves of bread and a chunk of meat, and that's their food for the day. These were pretty rowdy characters. They were known for intimidating people with these big old long knives that they carried, and they were not carrying those for a joke. These were kind of rough and tough characters where they couldn't get out of their way by persuasion, get in their way by intimidations. Yeah. Eventually, the Altubes left the area and went east. It was becoming too highly populated for these guys in the 1860s. So they went into Nevada and established some very extensive sheep ranches in the great state of Nevada while there was still money to be made in wool. In the late 19th century, you have a whole series of families out on the Vasco from primarily Western Europe growing sheep. So you've got people like the Cabrals, who were from Portuguese Azores, the Bordeses, who were French, and these people ran large herds of sheep. A few decades later, the 20th century inventor Oscar L. Starr came along. Just south of the adobe was the Starr Ranch. Oscar Starr was one of the developers of tracked vehicles, so he helped with the design of the Caterpillar tractor. That's where he made his money. He lived there from about 1918 to about 1942. His outbuildings were constructed using hot rivets. That's the same method that the Golden Gate Bridge is constructed in. And it's really very unusual. It's an industrial process. You do not expect to see ranch buildings constructed using hot metal rivets. So the ranch itself is historically important, both because of its association with Oscar Starr, 
someone definitely important in American history, as well as the use of the hot metal rivet technique to construct ranch buildings. From here, the trail heads uphill on the peninsula crest. Stop in about half a mile, that's 10 or 15 minutes of upward climbing, at a strategically placed picnic table. Get ready for some great views. <laughs> 